That was harder than expected. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm planning to change the chain and sprockets. As you can see, I've neglected my chain just a little, but some of the links were not sitting flat, so it needed changed anyway. So here goes, hopefully I'll manage to do this. I'll try and get the cameras on as much as possible. First of all, I need to get in and remove this tiny little bolt here. Next I need to remove these bolts here to get this cover off, so anti-clockwise. Tells you to release the wiring clip but it doesn't tell you how the wiring clip releases. That was harder than expected. <laughs> now we need to remove the bolts. Another wire clip.
stop this listener, okay? So at this point you need to get someone to stand on the rear brake for you or you can do it by sitting on the bike putting your foot on the rear brake and leaning down but all we want to do at this point is just break the tension on the nut and I need to go anti-clockwise you ready? Yep. Ugh. One more tight. And when all else fails, get someone with some actual arm muscles and you stand on the brake yourself. <laughs> there we go, that's that released. Now the next stage is to remove the old chain. Now taking two ends off with the grinder, making it completely flush. Should be really smooth so that your chain tool doesn't break. This is the chain tool I've got. So now that the chain is gone and we're going to remove the back wheel in order to do the rear sprocket. Take your wheel off as normal. So now I'm going to loosen the rear sprocket bolts and take off the rear sprocket from the sprocket carrier and it tells me to remember how it went. Let's go. So here we are again folks, day two. Yesterday we could not get these bolts to crack, whether we were on the bike or off. 
So today I had to take the wheel to someone with a power tool and he's undone the bolts for us so far. When you tighten these bolts, you need to tighten them in the same order I just put them on in. So you're skipping a bolt each time and doing it in a star pattern. We're only going to tighten them up so far because in order to get them to torque, we're going to need to put the wheel back on the bike because it needs a lot. So I'm just going to tighten them up hand tight at the moment. Right, it's this one, isn't it? So this is the chain I've gone with, let's see how this goes.
come around and to paste this on. And I don't stand a chance because it's quite difficult, but that's why we have tools. So this tool isn't working, but put the plate with the slip to the back and catch it on the back of the sprocket pins, the chain pins. And this should recess in there, but it doesn't, so I'm going to have to work with it and hold it in the right place just to make my life more difficult. So, we've managed to get the plate on. I'll be honest, I had no chance. I've had to adapt the tool because this part here would not fit inside that hole. So I had to get the Dremel. It was the same as this part here, which as you can see does not actually fit into the tool for some strange reason. This is actually the second one of these tools that I bought. The first one, which I got from Amazon, somebody from Amazon, uh, the riveter tool was actually another breaking pin. It never had the little dimple on the end that you need to rivet the chain with. And then this one, the plates don't fit in. But anyway, we've got there in the end and the chain is on, it just needs the pins flayed now. So that's the next job. So as you can see now, when I go on to one of the original rivets, that one's saying 67, that one's saying 66, and the one we have just done well, it's saying 66, now it's saying 60, it's saying all sorts of things because I can't hold the damn thing straight while I've got the camera. Now it's saying 67, but a minute ago it was saying 66, but uh, yeah, they're all about 67, 66. So that's what you want. So now I'm supposed to flay these pins using the chain tool again with the riveter tool. And this little anvil with a recess in it. So now I just need to put this part in here, put that part in there, and that will push that pin through, and this goes into the other end to meet it. And I'll show you that in a second. So I need to get this little bit over the back of the chain so that it catches and won't move. And then when I tighten this up, match it up to there, then when I tighten this one up it's going to push that pin into there. Apparently this doesn't take much so let's see because everything else has been harder than it seemed to need to be. What you want to ultimately end up with is this little bit fitting neatly, flushly in here. So as you can see, you can see that's not flush, it needs turned more.
No de dónde ya. So, after many, many, many turns, I'm not sure how many we lost count, unfortunately, five, six, maybe seven, uh, but first, the digital calipers were telling me that these pins were 19, and now they're saying 20. So, we're going to hope that we've done enough, and that that's going to stay tight. The end seems to fit into the hole much better now, from the tool. So now it's just a case of cleaning up the parts I take off from the front, front sprocket. I'm putting them back on, we need to torque this bolt first, put all this back together. We need to adjust the chain to the right tension, then we need to torque the axle bolt, and then do these to torque in a crisscross fashion. 